I've just been booking accommodation. Good morning. Um, so I haven't even showered yet. That's the next job. Ah, man, my teeth are so sore. Um, I put in a new tray last night. This one especially. I'm like, what are you doing? So today I'm just going to have a editing day and then I think I'll film tomorrow because I don't feel so good today. I just feel really tired. So weird. I've been like, I don't know if it's from my stomach issues making me tired because I've just had B12. It's not every day there. It's like... I don't know, like every now and then I'm just like, oh my god, like not like tired enough to sleep, just like kind of lethargic almost or something. I don't really know how to describe it. I got up maybe an hour and a half ago, yeah, did some work and booked our accommodation. Oh my god, so tired, but our accommodation for Europe or like kind of prepped it, you know, I like sent it to my friends so we could choose one and book it later. Um, I am now going to do some editing. Oh, actually, I'm going to go shower first. I am just having a chill day today, just like getting caught up on some bits of editing and everything. And then later on, if I'm done early, I might just hop into my room and do another declutter, like film one. Um, yeah, it's quite funny. I was just watching this video and it made me have a thought like everyone, well, not everyone. A few people on my channel give me like a hard time for using exo beauty quite often it's my own brand so i use it myself and i'm not insecure about that but like i feel bad sometimes i'm like oh but then no one has anything to say about other people only using morphe or only promoting sigma i don't mean to be like shady or anything because people genuinely like these products but like when other people are saying use my morphe brush code um or whatever i love my brushes so i promote them and obviously i make money off that but i just love my own brand does that make sense like i was just wondering like why is it different when some youtubers just promote one brush brand versus me just using my own brushes because <laughs> i feel like i don't like force them i don't know maybe other people have different opinions and that's okay look how straight my teeth are getting though like oh my god these ones still look a little bit crooked this one's actually in um but it's like a funny shape so it kind of like looks like it's crooked still so we might do some more revisions and then i might get some more dental work done like after i'm all done like this tooth here is way shorter than that one see which annoys me so i might get like i don't even know what i can do but i might get them like made to look more even and stuff afterwards i don't want like porcelain veneers really just like um maybe like get them capped or whatever it's called i don't know so i'm just going to look over this video my editor just sent in um i've just been sorting flights as well for formula one so i've done a lot this morning already it's almost 10. what time did i wake up i woke up at eight okay i've been up for a couple of hours this hoodie is so comfortable it's the one from my vlog the day before yesterday it's quite oversized i don't actually know what size i'm wearing though but it's so comfy i'm starving i'm gonna make some eggs on toast Classic. Basically my go-to lunch because it does not make me sick. Yay. you you do you love it so delicious it's delicious Zeus you enjoying it nice and crunchy they're so good with carrot like if we give them a meat treat they like just swallow it whole whereas carrots like they actually take their time eating it they sit there and they enjoy chewing it up and they love carrot I'm like do you want a carrot and they just Go nuts. I either give them like a baby carrot each or I'll give them like um like a long thin carrot. Give them half, like what they've got now. They love it. And they get one. How often do you get one? Maybe once or twice a week. Certain treats they get. So basically, I was feeding Louis and Zoe Seaweed Peak, which is like a really expensive, high quality food. They love it. Zeus is still kind of on it. He's like on 50-50. Um but it's like high fat because it's like all very natural and meaty and it had lots of like fish goodness and meaty stuff so it was like quite high fat 
And anyway, obviously it did not do Louis any favours because he ended up getting quite sick. His stomach was churning a lot. So we took him into the vet and he had to get blood tests done. So he's got like a little shaved patch. This was like a month ago or like a bit longer than that. He, oh, I'm so out of breath and I don't know why. <sighs> um, he, yeah, got a blood test. Had to stay at the vet for a couple hours, which was like heartbreaking. I was like, oh god, because the vet was like, he's probably got pancreatitis, is that what it's called? I don't remember. Basically, he was like, oh, do you feed your dog like heaps of like human food? And like, we were like, no, not at all. Like, literally, we barely ever feed Louis and Zeus. Like, our food, like I said, like their treats are like carrots, all those meaty treats, which we've cut right back down on. Even so, we didn't usually give them very many because they just like ate them so quickly and we were like, that's not good. Um, most of the time, it's like, ice or carrot like we're pretty stingy and we don't feed them off our plates so so we're like no not really and then I was like maybe it's their food because they're on like a really high fat food and he's like yeah that's probably what's done it and there was heaps of other stuff we talked about as well um because usually it's in like older dogs I think but yeah and he was like no his levels are quite high like he's not like got the disease or anything but that's like where it's headed or something along those lines I mean it was a while ago I can't really remember so we switched them onto a new food. I'll show you which one it is. I'm really bummed. Like, they love the ZWP, but they seem to be liking this one almost as much. Hamish reckons they really like it, but I don't reckon they like it as much. It's one for glucose management. So basically they said that he'll probably just always be on this food. Look, he thinks he's getting fed now. Um, because it's quite a low fat food. And I mean, Zeus can benefit from some weight loss anyway. So this is just, I don't know. Every single year at the vet we check Zeus. Because like I'm always so worried about his weight. Like even though we walk him and like we do not overfeed him. We like <laughs> underfeed him to try and help him lose weight and like nothing happens. So we like talk to the vet about it a few times. And he's not too worried. He's not like, you know, he's not like Zeus is at risk or anything. It's just like he looks fat. He's like, some dogs just are, like, he might have been damaged from parvo, which kind of makes sense. Like, maybe his metabolism or something was a bit damaged during parvo. Who knows? But, I mean, overall, other than that, he's, like, really healthy and everything. So the vet wasn't too worried, but I feel like on this food he's lost a little bit. I'd have to take him back to the vet and actually weigh him. But, I mean, it can't be a bad thing, right? So, yeah, they're on a new food now, and Louis hasn't had any of his stomach gurgling problems since... He doesn't look like he's lost weight, like it's not really a weight thing for him. Obviously he's just a very skinny dog anyway and he's quite active. Um, apart from when he's just being a couch potato during the day, you know. He plays a lot, goes on good walks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's my little dog story. Have any of you guys ever had any experience with that pancreatitis or something like that it's called? Um, yeah, so I'm glad we took him to the vet instantly um, and got it sorted out. It was not cheap to get a blood test, but I was just like, do what you gotta do. <laughs> Um, he wanted to actually keep Louis in overnight at the time too, but I was like, do you think he needs to be overnight or like, can we take him and just like call the emergency vet if we need to and pay the high fee? And he's like, you can do that. Just because like, I know Louis and he is such a sook and I think he would have been traumatized if we left him at the vet overnight. Like even when we're gone, he's always in his own home. Um, and he's been to like a kennel and stuff and didn't like it. But I was just like, I think when he's feeling sick, he just needs to be at home with me. And he didn't need to be on a drip or anything, like, they just wanted to keep an eye on him, so we just kept an eye on him here, and it turned out well. Um, and he's, like, back to his happy self. He was just sick for a couple of days, like, it was really random, but I was just quite worried, that's why we did the blood test, so... I'm glad we got it sorted out instantly, and now we've prevented him from getting worse, so I just thought I'd talk about it, just in case any of you guys, um, you know, ever experienced something similar. Obviously, the Zewi Pig food is really good for certain dogs and perhaps certain breeds as well because Italian greyhounds are kind of rare in New Zealand like I think there's like one or two others in like my whole region like if that there's a few up in Auckland and like a few down south but there's not very many Italian greyhounds in New Zealand I would be surprised if there was like more than a hundred over our whole country yeah ta. playing with them right now so like here in New Zealand like I don't know I guess our vets and stuff don't really know what kind of food to feed them or I don't know Perhaps Zewi Peak's really good for certain breeds, but not Italian Greyhounds. I don't know. I have no idea. So yeah, he's just on a lower fat diet now, basically, is where I was going with that. And he's doing perfect. The only thing that's really annoying about this food is we have to get it from our vet. We go to Anderson's, and it's not available at Animates, where we normally go to buy our food. So that sucks. But it works. And they like it. And yeah. Helps manage glucose weight and improve digestion.
helps metabolize fat. Um, so yeah, I think that's like the main part that he needed to have. Cause yeah, obviously he doesn't really need healthy weight help. Little skinny Louie. I love my little fatty Zeus. But obviously, you know, you don't want your dog to be like, I always get concerned. I'm like, I don't want him to like die early or something. But I mean, if the vet's not worried, I guess I shouldn't be worried and we're doing what we can for him. So what if he's a happy little spud? Have any of you guys ever had dogs that have had parvo and had similar issues? Like I'd love to know. Or like, even if you've had like, cause Zeus is a poodle bichon chihuahua, like, I feel like usually poodles are quite like slim, but like I know some certain breeds of dogs can be quite like barrel-like. Um, I don't know if you guys have any anything to say. Tell me why the spider's kind of cute. Look at those little fluffy legs. They look like um, pipe cleaners. <laughs> He's dancing. It's a peacock spider. Look at him go. Ince, ince, ince. Puts his little butt up. Look at it go. Dig, dig, dig. Twerk, twerk, twerk. I think it's because he's got little fluffy like front legs. He looks cute. I don't know. I probably still would freak out if I saw one in real life. I'm like, this is just boring. And I know a load of you would say, no, I like to watch that. Like that five minutes is good. And I'm like, no. Here's today's video. I've got it muted. Shout out to some of you early birds. It's not up in subscription boxes just yet. What do you guys want to see more of on Exo Beauty? I'm trying to like brainstorm ideas on the stuff I want to do over the next like two years. I have a big list, but I don't want to mention anything because I like literally just purely want to hear what you guys think. I popped a pimple before, I cannot help myself. Why do I do this? Like my skin looks like nice, like in my opinion. Like I think it looks really like healthy and glowy and Obviously, I've got freckles and redness and stuff, but that's just my skin. Like, that'll never really change. But in terms of, like, my actual pimples and, like, the, like, blackheads and stuff, I didn't have any. And then I, I find these, like, non-existent ones and squeeze them and it's just so bad. Um, I want to show you a package I just got because... Oh, snap. I took out my... Um, I had to order some new shampoo yesterday because I finally ran out. I'm going to show you what I use to get that pink colour in my hair. Um, so, like, for the last two years or so, how long has it been? No, not two years, like, a year maybe. I've had that, like, pinky kind of tinge to my hair um, when I just wash it at home. So when I go to the hairdresser, I usually get a pinky toned toner put through my hair. Or I just do, like, a um, blue-purple toner to make my hair super white. Um... It's kind of hard to see in this lighting. You see it like every now and then in certain lighting. Like you can kind of see it over here. This is not sponsored, but this is where I shop. Hair Plus. Oh, there you go. It's just like a New Zealand online shampoo website. I just shop on here purely because it's like convenient. I order stuff and it comes like the next day. So it's just really easy. My battery just went completely dead. Oh man. I'm like so deflated lately. I don't know what it is. I feel like I just need some sunshine or something. Okay, so this is what I use. This one right here. This is the Di Lorenzo Rosewood Shampoo. So if I show you the color of it, it looks like this. It's like a pinky purpley color. So it's like a lot more pink than purple shampoo. But I need to say like this is not a, I need to go like on my knees or something. There we go. This is not a toner. This is a actual like color deposit. So you can't just like use a couple of pumps on this of this and like shampoo your hair because you'll just get like well depending how porous your hair is, like how damaged it is or how healthy it is or whatever. Um, it's just gonna like stain your hair that color. Well, like temporarily, it's like temporary. And obviously, depending on the blonde hair you are working with or whatever hair color you're working with, it's gonna depend on what like outcome you have. So for me, obviously, I've got like light blonde hair. I get very close foil, so like you can kind of see the pinky bits here. Um, so what I do is I take one or two pumps of this. Actually, let me start from the beginning. First of all, I just shampoo my hair with normal shampoo. Second, for the second shampoo, because I shampoo my hair twice, I take one to two pumps of this, and then I use equal parts of my other shampoo. And I mix it together on the palm of my hand, and then I put it in my hair and distribute it all the way through. 
um, and that just kind of tins my hair. I leave it in for like 30 seconds to a minute. The first few times I used it, it stained a lot more. However, like I think because my hair's gotten a little bit healthier, it doesn't really like tint my hair hard out anymore. So sometimes I even do just use it like by itself and it's still fine. But you'll know what I mean, like if you try it. However, like my friend tried it and it didn't even do anything to her hair. So like it must just totally depend. But that's what I use. Um, and sometimes I use the purple one too, but I prefer the look of the pinky kind of tone. I just feel like it's really flattering on me. I don't know. And the one tube, I think it must be the same size as this. Um, 250 mil. It lasted, yeah, it must have lasted like a year or something. Sulfate free, paraben free. And, um, I do find it's quite like drying, so I just make sure to condition really well afterwards. And I do that pretty much every single time I wash my hair or every second time. It depends like how freshly done my hair is and how like yellow it starts going. It says you can leave it in for up to five minutes, which I've never done. Like I just leave it in for like 30 seconds to like, I don't even know, like a minute maximum. I just wing it because if my hair goes pink, I don't even care. Like I just rock it. Um, yeah. And it's not got any animal testing or anything like that. So I really, really like this one. And then I actually got another one to try. So I was like, why not? This one's meant to be more pink. It's the rose gold shade. So I'll try it one day and show you guys. Oh my god, that's so bright. I'll show you guys like what happens. Oh god, I'm leaking it. I just like googled rose gold De Lorenzo and it came up with like the coolest like colored hair. So hopefully it's hopefully it turns out okay. What else do we have here? Red can bruise with crafted malt sample, shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. Must be for men. It says Barber Essentials. They always send me free like samples. It's so nice. Yeah, that smells like boys. It smells good. So yeah, I'm excited to have this back again. I completely used on my old one. Like seriously, there was nothing left. I've got another parcel right here too. Might as well open it up quickly. With compliments. Hey Shannon, we're the distributors for Electric Ink Skincare in Australia and New Zealand. We love your tattoos and the jewelry collection you did with Michael and wanted to send you some products to try. We are the only skincare scientifically formulated for tattoos. We use active ingredients such as amino acids, AHAs, vitamin C, etc. that work to restore color, vibrancy to any tattoo. Give it a go by spraying some defining oil on your tattoos. Watch the magic happen. My knees hurt. Defining oil, vibrancy serum, and daily moisturizer. Ooh, he just caught a fly. Ooh. I had the like ranch slider open yesterday and wow. So many flies came in. It was the biggest regret of life. So what they say to try? The vibrancy oil. Oh, defining oil. Oh, it smells good and it feels so moisturizing. What is that? I've got such dry skin all over my arms still from holiday. My skin just dried out. Okay, can you see a difference? Other than the fact my um skin looks a lot more hydrated i can see a difference it looks a lot blacker and it doesn't look as like feathery vibrancy serum my skin looks so much better that smells quite good i like it i love the packaging too so moisturizing and then I'm assuming the daily moisturizer is just, yeah, a moisturizer. I'm just going to pop it back in the box for now. So, thank you heaps, Electric Ink Tattoo Care. Electricinkskin.co.nz Oh my gosh, I'm getting kind of hot in here. New Velvet Matte Foundation. Hi, Shannon. Super excited to show you our new collection. Velvet Matte dries down to a demi-matte, and we've got more shades coming soon. Oh, there's heaps of stuff in here. Do you guys want another drugstore first impression video blushes foundations some of my friends swear by designer brands foundation i tried one once and was not impressed with it but i've got another one i want to try that yeah like heaps of my friends really like but Maybe I'll try this one instead because it's brand new. Lush Precious Metal Lip Creams. So they must be like metallic. An illuminator palette. Oh my gosh. I feel like something's broken in here. Thank goodness. It's like all powdery. I'm gonna swatch this one. 
Ooh, that's so pretty. I like that. Let's watch one more. That's actually so nice because it's not shimmery either. It's like very finely milled. It just kind of glows. Um, and then there are a couple more as well. This is from my friends over at Lovington. Happy Easter, Shannon Hamish, Louis and Zeus. So cute. They always send cute gifts. I've got some bronzing mousse. Oh dear. Some chocolate. My fave. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's so not gonna fit either of my dogs. <laughs> Zeus is too fat. This one will fit though. How cute. And then I got one too. It's a onesie. And one for Hamish. Maybe Indy will fit this one. Maybe. We'll see. Thank you so much, Loving Tan. I've seen a lot of people asking what Tomorrowland is. So some of you may know I'm massively into music. It's one of the most like cutest parts of my life. Um, I especially love EDM kind of music, like electronic music. I like all music, but I really love EDM music. And I'm not like a big concert goer. I don't do a lot of concerts, but I do do a lot of like festivals and stuff. Like I prefer like that kind of atmosphere and vibe. So if you don't know what Tomorrowland is, it's basically the world's, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty sure it's the world's biggest music event, especially for like EDM and stuff. So if you think of something like Electric Daisy Carnival or, you know, something like that, it's kind of like that. And they have amazing like stages and I've wanted to go for about five years now, but the tickets often sell out like within minutes. So it's really hard to go and people from all over the world attend and I can't wait. I'll show you a little sneak peek of the movie they make. You can Google this for yourself as well on YouTube. I'm so hyped, like literally, I cannot wait. I'll skip ahead. Let's look at the lineup together. I'm so sad. I literally wanted to cry when I saw friggin' Seven Lions. <laughs> this is weekend one. I'm going weekend two. I'm like devastated. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like praying that he's just gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna come to weekend two as well. I know Steve Eric is going. I asked him a while ago. Um, what stage? Sunday maybe? Yeah, Sunday. Um, who I love. Okay, let's start from Friday. No, not yet. Just wait one moment, please. Just one more moment. I love this stage. Jaws especially in San Holo. Um, this stage pretty much. Above and Beyond, Don Diablo, Nervo, Dimitri Vegas Like Mike, Alesso. I saw that Alesso at um, Stereosonic 2014, was it? Shush. Oh, R.L. Grime and Yellow Claw. Yeah. There's so many stages, like you can see, so it's three days long. Smash the House looks really good. The main stage, of course. I'm so excited. But I'm pretty sure there's like heaps of people still to be announced because there's like all these stages that are like empty. But screw you. I'm s and Slander and Nightmare, Kezo. I love all of them. So I'm salty. And there's like French Montana. I know you're not actually sad. You're wagging your tail. <laughs> this is what he wants. Sheep. Time to play. Talk to you guys soon. Hamish cooked me dinner tonight. Fish leeks, mashed pumpkin, silver beet and beans. They'll be like, I see this every night at your house. Pretty much. It's all we eat because it's the only thing that I'm not sick of. You can't normally eat the same thing over and over again. So it's I've got no choice. Huh? Got no choice. I'm gonna say goodnight now because I'm so tired. I'm gonna turn the tea off. TV off, blah, brush my teeth, wash my face, and go to sleep. You can't do much now, can you?